Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast ministry of Crossroads Church. I'm here with my good friend, John Riley. Welcome. We want to talk to you about just a few minutes here about leadership, what servant leadership is all about, especially in these crazy times where we are in desperate need as a nation for healthy leadership. The church should be at the forefront of developing and setting a vision for what that really looks like. And uh, John's going to share with us just something amazing, a little story he's used with his family, and this over kind of flowed into um, him being a corporate executive, what this looks like in leadership out in the uh, marketplace. And uh, I just asked him to read this for us. This could be something you could read for your children. I had never heard of the Stone Soup story, story before, but I thought it was, it was pretty great stuff. Um, but let me just open this, this time with um, Mark chapter 10, verse 45, and Jesus said this really clearly for us when it comes to, to leadership and our perspective that we need to learn and grow in. In Mark 10, 45, Jesus says, for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Let me say that again. For the, even the Son of Man, Jesus, came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And that summarizes really the whole aspect of discipleship and the gospel of what it is to follow Jesus and become a spiritual leader and to grow in our leadership. It all flows from that statement here. And so um, with that, John, I want to turn over to you. But real quick, just man, tell us a little about, about your family. You know, you got a wife, a couple kids, just what's going on? Yeah, good morning, Steve. Thank you. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. been married uh, 10 years to a local girl here in the mountains, yeah. Amy. Uh, two little kiddos, a third and a second grader already. That was fast, right? That goes fast. Uh, uh, raising uh, the family here in the mountains and uh, getting out, getting into it, and just enjoying this beautiful place to raise a family. But um, the beauty of, of, of raising the family here is I want them to grow up slowly, yeah. right? Like uh, just grow up slowly, yeah. not too fast. That's right. And um, let it all happen more in a natural pace. And it's... Uh, as, as much as I want to slow it down, it's not. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. speeding up. It, uh, it is. It yeah. does. But it's, For a, sure. it's the most uh, amazing gift, humbling experience to be a dad. And you start thinking about things that before you have those kids, you never think about. Yeah. And, and when you are, that's all you think about. Right. <laughs> so, and I think with that speed of our culture and just this I- idea of thinking about what a leader is, obviously as a parent, we want to develop these principles in our children, right? So that they can stand upon biblical principle and, and move in to be everything that God has called them to be, right? So it just puts this role on mom and dad as the disciple makers of our children to set a tone in the household of what genuine good leadership, especially servant leadership, looks like. And uh, John, do you want to just read this story for us here? And, and, and then we can build off and talk about a couple of things from it, but just a little history, how this is, you know. Yeah, so this book is called Stone Soup. And if you Google the term Stone Soup, there's there's many, many, many little videos on YouTube and books, and there's probably 10,001 ways this story has been told over time. Uh, this version in particular is by Child's Play. The, the author is Jess, J-E-S-S, Stockham. So if you, uh, if you Google Jess Stockham in Stone Soup, this is a children's version of the story. Yeah. Awesome. And the beauty of this one, it also comes with a little CD in there. So yeah. it's quite, you know, there's somebody else with a much better radio <laughs> voice that narrates it than sure. me. But this truly is uh, a friend of mine at work who's also uh, quite an amazing, strong Christian uh, sent me this book. He said, I loved reading this with my kids awesome. and now I'm reading this with mine. There is no better story that exemplifies servant leadership, I think, to the to the child than the way this story's been done. And it's it sounds just, like it's just a great bridge out to the unbelieving world as such that you, know, you can't go straight maybe to Scripture with them. Start a stone soup. Start with a story, <laughs> yeah. So let us have it. Why don't you, you just read you it? it. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, this could be something even just to watch this podcast with your child to listen to this story and have a discussion about. But, uh, man, take it away. Yeah, this will probably only take a few minutes. It's a quick little kiddo book, but uh, big story. Let's do it. Big story. One cold winter's day many years ago, a band of weary wanderers arrived at a small village on the edge of a large wood. They had been journeying for many days, and they were hungry and tired. At last, said the leader, a large friendly dog. Warm fires, friendly faces, and a nice hot supper. Woohoo! 
Yes, said another dog. I'd give anything for a bowl of carrot soup right now. Or a big hearty stew, said another. With potato or pasta or rice. Oh, yeah. As they started to unpack their belongings for the night, however, they noticed that the village was very quiet and seemed empty. Not many lights at the windows, said one, and there is no smoke from the chimneys. There's no one about, added the other. I wonder what's wrong. They started to put their tent, bu- their tent up before long a door opened to one of the little cottages, and one of the old villagers came out. It's best you move on, he said. It's been a long, hard winter, and we have no food left. We cannot feed you tonight. We cannot even feed ourselves. One by one, the other villagers came out of their houses. We are poor, one said, and hungry, joined in another. We cannot offer you food. Be on your way, they said. Don't you worry about that, said the leader. We're going to have plenty of stone soup. There will be enough for everyone, you too and all of you alike. I've never heard of stone soup, said one of the villagers. It's good, said the leader. It's the most delicious soup you'll ever, ever taste. It's hot, it's tasty, and it's filling. All we need is some firewood for a fire. Well, answered the villagers, We may have a little wood left. Uh, Let me go check. Before long, the wanderers had built a roaring fire from the wood that one of the villagers had found for them. They put a large cooking pot on it filled with water, and soon it was boiling busily. The villagers came out to stand around the fire and held out their hands. Ah, warmth, one of them said. What a good idea to put all this wood together to make a big, roaring, warm fire for all of us. The leader reached into the cart and pulled out a bundle. He unwrapped it carefully and revealed a large stone. Is that it? The old villager asked. It looks just like an ordinary stone. We've wasted our precious firewood on that. This is no ordinary stone, said the leader. It's a stone soup stone and he dropped it into the boiling water. The cook dipped in a spoon and tasted the liquid. It's good, asked one of the villagers eagerly. It's not bad, he said, but it needs a little salt. He turned to the leader. Do we have a little salt? The leader shook his head. No, I don't think so. It's, it's no good without salt, said the cook. I'll have to tip it away. Wait a minute, one of the little villagers said. Let me see. I might have a little salt left over at my house. The cook tipped in the salt and tasted the soup. Mmm, much better. If only we had some parsley. Wait, called out one of the other villagers. I think I may have a little bunch of parsley back in my house. I'd forgotten all about it until now. And off he went to his cottage to fetch it. I don't suppose anyone has any carrots, have they? Asked the cook. It's really good if there's a little bit of carrots. Yes, a small voice called out. My father got some carrots hidden in the loft. We think we have a few left. Do we have to have some pepper too? I think we have some of that too, cried another. I'll go get it. Before long, all the villagers had remembered little bits and pieces of foods and seasonings to go in the soup. Only the old villager had refused to giving anything to the meal. Saying he had no food in his house at all, everyone stood around the cooking pot, breathed in deeply. The smells were perfect. Is it ready? Asked a small voice in the bunch. We are so hungry. The cook dipped in his spoon and sipped the broth. No, he said, shaking his head. What we really need is an onion. Everyone stared at their feet and shuffled uneasily. Then one by one, they all turned to look at the old villager. He turned red and muttered, All right, all right. I might have just one onion left in my house. Just one, mind you. And off he shuffled. After a while, the old villager returned, carrying the biggest onion you could even imagine or wish for. 
Everyone cheered as the cook chopped it up and threw it into the soup. Even the old villager smiled a little. Everyone at the feast swore it was the finest soup they had ever tasted. It was piping hot, rich, and filling. And there was enough for everyone to have at least three bowlfuls. After they had eaten their fill, the villagers brought out their fiddles, their flutes. They danced late into the night. Next morning, the wanderers packed up to leave. Won't you stay a little longer, the villagers begged. The leader reached into his cart and brought out the stone, wrapped once again in its bag. This is for you, he said. But it will only work if you all cook together. And if everyone brings something to the feast, the villagers thanked him warmly and sat down to plan their next supper. The wanderers finished up their packing and set off towards the next village. Once they were clear out of sight, the leader bent down and picked up a large stone at the edge of the path. Just in case, he thought. Just in case. It's good stuff. So, John, when you read that story to your children, what's what's the discussion? Talk to me. What does that look like? What comes out? What are they? It took a few take? times yeah. to, for them to get it, yeah. but they started to realize, okay, wait a minute. Everybody had a little bit. Mm. Nobody had enough to make their own soup, yeah. but together yeah. they could all make the most wonderful soup and had plenty for everybody. So they started to really get like, huh, if we all work together. And even though the wanderers, the, the, the group that came to town was hungry, they wanted to ask for food. They wanted to ask for a place to stay. Instead of asking for something for themselves, they said, can we make you some soup? Yeah. And, and, and the kids are starting to get that. Huh? Like, it's you get what you want by by doing something different, yeah. right? So, so how does that bridge? How, how, talk to me a little bit. How does that bridge the marketplace as an executive out there for a global corporation? What does that look like in your? How, how does that change your perspective? You know, when it comes to leadership. Well, so so recently over these last few months, uh, a couple of individuals and myself, a small group of us, were asked to put together a design thinking framework playbook for our enterprise. Yeah. Talking eighteen thousand people. Yeah. So, in a, in a group of eighteen thousand people, you already have some great engineering minds, mechanical minds, and you have people that are already doing design thinking workshops on creating new products. So instead of me and one other individual sitting down and writing a playbook, which would be accepted by no one, <laughs> we, we went and found the subject matter experts around the company. And instead of us doing it in two or three days with two guys, right. and it not being a group effort, we got a small group of six, eight people that were representative of the larger whole. Yeah. And gave everyone an opportunity to put their best ideas on the table. And some of those first few weeks of phone calls were brutal, yeah. right? Everybody's idea was the best one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and over time with vulnerability and creativity and humility, everybody started to realize they were also very similar and let's just cherry pick the best parts from each yeah, and cool. put it all together and, it, and what we could have done in three days and, you know, maybe a B effort, yeah. we got an A-plus effort in six weeks. Yeah. But we involved yeah. the, the voice of, of the many. Yeah, that's awesome. And it, it, was, it was hard in it, yeah. but the result was exponentially bigger. Yep. Absolutely. Another example. Oh, we're launching a new piece of software at the office. And... Small group of people, one guy, creative guy, came up with an idea to brand it and name it. So we're like, yeah, that's a good one. We'll go with that. Another group of people came forward and said, we don't like that name. Can we collectively get a handful of creative people together and go through a, an event and yeah. come up with a better name? And we'll put that name in the hat too. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is, is we've, we've won by losing ownership, right? So, so how that looks in corporate America today is you, you think about corporate with a lot of people that being very hierarchical, yeah. top down, staunch. Right. 
the new kind of thinking is mission focused, missional yeah. or horizontal. Yeah. Identify a project, a concept, something you need to go after and do and get done in an agile way. Yeah. And you can't do that through hierarchical structure. Yeah. You have to just grab the right people across different functions, bring them together and go after it. Yeah. So again, it's, it's, it's that servant way mm -hmm. to serve the bigger whole. And it has so many applications, obviously, for the church, because that's not a corporate idea. That's, as we saw, this is Jesus' idea, <laughs> this is right? Jesus' idea. You know, and uh, <laughs> so, so many at so many levels for the church, you know, just it, the church itself is called the body of Christ, and that God has given unique gifts to each person. So it can't be the body of Christ unless each person is playing their role, you know? And yes. so the whole context of what we do as church needs to be couched in this understanding of servant leadership and, and playing our role, the, our unique role and contribution into that, into that family, into that body. The, the word says, you know, if you abide in me, you will never be thirsty or hungry, right? Yeah, yeah. So all of these people in this book were hungry and cold. And they all brought what yeah. they had, their yeah, gift. It's great. It's great. Right? The, the, the parts of the body of this community, yeah. of this yeah. village, brought their yeah. gift to the stone soup pot. It's great. And they all ate. It's great. Right? But yeah. no, nobody was trying to control the situation. There wasn't, it wasn't about like this dictator leader, right. I'm going to make soup and I get the first bowl. Like there was none of that. Right. The, the orchestration was done in a way where it was, how can I serve, not how can I be in charge? And, and, and the greater good, right? Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah. Right. And John, that's awesome. That is really great stuff. Right. And, and uh, well, I, I hope uh, you can, just something for the kids, even at a, at a, at a simple leadership level, uh, to nurture these things at a corporate level of, of leadership, and then obviously at a church level of uh, just thinking about leadership and, and joining in to collaborate in our different little spheres, right, of the ministry inside the church uh, and play our part in, in the body of Christ. And we'd love to help you if you've got questions about how you can fit in and use your unique contributions here. We'd love to put that to work. And uh, John, well, thank you, man. Thanks thank for that. Thank you. Thanks that for is, the time. That is awesome. Hope that's helpful in this uh, day and age where we desperately need an awakening to biblical leadership, servant leadership. And uh, Jesus has said it all right here. So I hope that encourages you. God bless. God bless. Hey, hey.